moment you hear that sound, once you hear the music, it's peculiar. You should know by now where it's coming from. It's coming from the Eternal Revenue Service in Ogu State. And it's to tell you that the time is ripe for another fresh edition of IRS Digest. This is a corporate social responsibility of the Internal Revenue Service. We do this every Thursday on this program. This is OGTV 25 UHF. And on DSTV, you can get us on channel 260. On GoTV, you get this program live now on channel 100. And on Star Times, you can also get it on channel 113. You can join the conversation online on Ubu TV and be part of this discussion. I am Tuji Akintayo, your regular anchor on this program. And I'm so excited today because we have somebody in the house that, yes, my mind is just at rest. But then, don't let me draw the curtains yet and show you the picture. When the time is right, I will bring the guest in. I'd like to welcome everyone, so please let's call our friends. Call everyone to be part of this informative program put together by the Internal Revenue Service in Ogun State to sensitize the public on the need to pay their taxes and also to let them know why and what their taxes are used for such that they will have some confidence in government, they will have the continuous interest to pay their taxes and levies as at when due. It is also to encourage everyone who is yet to come to the tax debt to be part of the tax experience in Ogun State. Welcome once again to IRS Digest. We'll take a break on the program now. When we come back, we will introduce our guest and then we'll look at the topic on the front burner for today. Welcome back. This is IRS Digest by the Internal Revenue Service in Ogun State. Just before we went on that break, I was telling you about our guest for today. And, um, well, I have to be very careful now because when you are dealing with a controller, you have to be sure that everything you say is under control. I'm talking about the Abelkuta Zonal Controller of the Internal Revenue Service. Very dearly beloved. Madam, you are most welcome to IRS Digest. Thank you, Mr. Kitayo. Okay, it's good to see your face. Good to be here today. <laughs> it's quite it's some been time. a long time. We always I'm like happy it. I'm here. We always like it, despite your tight schedule, when we have you know, people like you on the set of the program. Thank you, sir. Uh, today, we want to look at a very important topic. And I'm sure quite a lot of our viewers, you know, some actually called me about two weeks ago you know, when IRS had to go for enforcement. And um, the period of that enforcement, of course, they had to, you know, see the other side of the Internal Revenue Service. So today we're looking at compliance. And um, maybe we should begin from there, Ma. What exactly is compliance? Well, we talk about compliance in respect to taxation. Yes. It's one thing to pay tax. Okay. It's another thing to pay what is due. Okay. Tax is law. Okay. There is a guideline for every payment, okay. whichever revenue item it is. This is what the law says. This is how it should be done. Once those are followed, you have complied. Okay. Compliance definitely is kind of is related to okay, paying what the law says, adequate payment. All right. So once you pay adequately, you have complied. Okay. Now, uh, let's, let's look at this word that the Internal Revenue Service always uses. They call it voluntary compliance. Okay. Uh, what exactly does it mean? Voluntary compliance means 
you working with your two legs to the internal revenue service or logging on to www.ogunstaterevenue.org looking at filing your returns okay appropriately all right declaring your income okay if you are an individual not working with um a corporate organization declaring your income the system will compute your taxes for you are you making that payment without being pushed that is voluntary compliance okay so um it, it looks like the internal revenue service prefers that every revenue agency prefers okay. that especially the ogrs because if all our taxpayers comply okay. if all our taxpayers do it voluntarily Hello, sir. Yeah. I will be at peace. <laughs> <laughs> I will need to run after anybody again. We'll just go log on to our system. What is there? What is there? Oh, this person has paid. This person has paid. And the state continues the work with your money. Okay, but unfortunately, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. You know, we. It looks like I don't want to call it the Nigerian factor. Uh, it looks like it takes a lot of effort. But now let, let's look at your experience in that in, in, in that dimension. How compliant or how you know um, effectively are people complied? People co from experience, like okay. you asked yeah, yeah. or like you said, people comply when they are pushed. My God, not because they want to. Oh, Lord. So the appeal is for people to voluntarily do see what Ogun State has been doing with our money. Yeah. With their money. Taxpayers. Well, your own money too should be there. Yes, my own money is there because <laughs> you very well know I'm paying my taxes. Yeah, I, so, oh, I don't have a choice. <laughs> have a choice. Nobody has a choice okay. really because okay. it That's is true. a responsibility. It is That's mandatory. True. Tax is law. Okay. If people pay now that they know they have to yeah. or they've always known anyway yeah. If they voluntarily do it, yeah. it will make it easier. But I can tell you, an average person okay. does not comply until the IRS comes after them. And these are our taxpayers. They are our partners in progress. Yeah. We see no reason why we should run after them. We've been trying to build an environment, a tax-friendly environment, and a friendly tax environment. A tax-friendly yeah, environment, yeah. a friendly yeah. tax environment. They go hand in hand. Okay. We have been trying to build both. And I can tell you reasonably, we have them in place. Okay. So it's just, that's one of the reasons for this program. Okay. So I appeal to our people, Ogun State is your friend. No more questions about what is government doing with our money. We all see what government is doing with our money. Let us comply voluntarily. It's the, 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 the compliance level is still a bit low, okay. but we know gradually we are getting there, and we shall get there. Okay, so um, it, it could be better. Oh, definitely. Okay, it could be better. Now let, let's let's look at. Okay, we were looking at the fact that you know our people. It looks like they just have to be forced. For example, when the BVN was going to be. You know, the deadline was set. Meanwhile, the BBN has been on for a long time. Even the in, you know, NIN registration, which has been on for a long time, until the government now set a deadline, you know, um, is it possible for the Internal Revenue Service to set deadlines? Are there deadlines for payment of taxes? Yes, there are deadlines. Okay. For individuals, you are expected to file your returns before the end of March. Okay. For a corporate organization before the end of January, okay. which the OGRS had to keep sensitizing people and yeah. we are not there yet. Okay. Then for um, different uh, units. Yes. And what we do yeah. for pay as you earn, okay. which is on a monthly basis, yeah. you are expect the organization is expected to file, to, to, to remit yeah. the taxes within 10 days of deduction. Okay. So to make it uniform, we always say on or before the 10th day okay. of the, the succeeding day. month. But what the Internal Revenue Service does is, once it's a few days into that succeeding month, we send that SMS message, okay. SMS to all our corporate organizations okay. as reminders. So okay. as I speak, today is 
uh, 11th, 11th yeah. by yesterday every organization is expected to have remitted their taxes okay that this this point that you are making now brings me to we've always said it on this program a lot of the times people will tell me they didn't come irs they just jumped on us they didn't discuss with us we just saw them suddenly is it is it really true uh, because i like this point to be clear you know in the minds of our people is it really true that the internal revenue service just jump some people and then you begin the enforcement you don't even have um, you know a human face when it is it is it really true man it is not true okay everything done by the internal revenue service is a process okay you had you're given the opportunity to file your returns to declare your income okay. you are assessed based on the income declared okay. you are given a number of days to pay if it's if you refuse to declare your income we give you a best of judgment assessment That's right. once you have that we give you a certain number of days you are free to object within 30 days okay. but if after 30 days you don't object to the to the assessment it becomes final and binding right so from there we take it up and there's always there have always been meetings meetings people saying IRS did not come to us. I just gave you an example now. Yeah. That once we get to around the 4th or 5th yeah. of any month, we send out bulk SMSs to agencies, okay. reminding them of their, yeah, the of their, life, of their okay. duty, of their, res good, that's the word, of their responsibility to make the payments. Okay. And let me add at this point yeah. that anything from 11th, okay. anytime, anything from today, yes, interest and penalty begins to accumulate. Okay. On, on that the, of last, last month. month okay so tell me what irs is expected to do again you are our friend enlightening <laughs> us. <laughs> no, <laughs> no i think the point is you know because why i'm asking that is you know because i present this program okay so a lot of people when they see me you know each time you will just find the but i try to tell them because i know the effort the internal revenue service you know puts into uh, information pulls into enlightenment and all of that. I know that even last month, uh, you know, month of January, we had series of uh, interventions on filing of returns. You know, so when people now say all of those things, you begin to wonder: is, is it the same thing that? Is it the same? So that's why I wanted you to enlighten us more. You know, and then. Assuming they now come, assuming, okay, the Internal Revenue Service, after they have failed to meet the deadline, and then you give them a best of judgment, can they still come to IRS? Oh, sure. We are very friendly. Okay. But remember I said, we have the law okay. to work with. Okay. So whatever the law says, we follow. And if you make your appeal within the stipulated time, with one thing we always lay emphasis on is if you are objecting to an assessment okay. by the time you submit you drop your objection always attach your evidence of payment of the undisputed amount okay do you understand always attach the evidence of the undisputed amount then we take it off from there they can always come okay so it's not as if that okay they have just given us this you know like somebody told me said they just gave us this amount they just said we should just go and pay and I said, okay, uh, even though I don't work for IRS, but I still feel that you could get down to the Internal Revenue Service. I'm still going to come back to this because this is very uh, important, you know, for our people to get that, you know, uh, the Internal Revenue Service is a friend. We are friends to everybody and our door is widely open. All right. You heard it from her. We're going to take a break, a short break on the program. When we come back, we are still going to continue our discussion don't forget you can join the conversation on Facebook, Ogun TV. The program is trending live now. Be part of the conversation. If you have questions, we can always treat your questions on the set. And our guest is Abel Kuta, Zonal Controller of the Internal Revenue Service, uh, Mrs. Oluwashi Olajube. Stay with us. We'll be back after this timeout for more interaction with our guest on the program.
of course those are some of the tax offices of the internal revenue service all across Ogun state on display you could get to any of the zones closest to you any of the offices closest to your area you are likely to definitely likely to find you know a tax office of the internal revenue service you are watching irs digest and we're looking at compliance our guest is the Abel Kuta Zonal Controller of the Internal Revenue Service, Mrs. Oluwa Shemwala Jube. Madam, it's good to know that you are still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know that you didn't release me to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, yeah, but we'll finish. Now, let's look at minimum tax. Okay. Sometimes you go to a shop and then you give this person this assessment and another person gets, you know, a higher assessment and it looks like you know there is a disparity is there is it really all right like that uh, you know are there yardsticks for assessment or are there reasons why okay even when we are working around the same environment you can give this one this kind of amount and then this other person will take another amount yes yes there are disparities and there should be disparities okay. you will agree with me that the assessments are not raised from our office okay. from on minimum tax now okay. our people go to the field okay. they do on the spot assessment okay. if you sell rice and i sell rice okay. the number of the number of bags of rice you sell daily yeah will definitely differ from mine okay so it will be unfair and it will be it will reflect okay. in what you have on display or what you have in stock okay. it will be unfair for the internal revenue service to say, Tunji Akintayo, you are paying 20,000. Shinwala Jube, you are paying 20,000. Okay. Even you amongst yourselves, you will have what the Yorubas will call you, yeah. you will grumble. Yeah. So that is what, that, that, that's the basis. Nobody raises assessments from the bedroom. Mm -hmm. We go on the field, yeah. we see what you have. Yeah. This is the minimum for this particular, each trade too has a minimum. Okay. This is the minimum for this particular trade, but because you are trading above the minimum threshold, this is your own assessment. This tailor has just one sewing machine, and we are only seeing two sewn materials on display. She can be on the minimum. But you, yeah. you saw for the hair of mighty. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you want to call yourself a tailor. <laughs> you saw for the hair of mighty. Okay. So we need to assess you based on that. All right, so it, it spreads according to according to trade, okay, according to the size of business, okay. Because you know, some people said, Oh, they came to our shop, they gave, they, they gave this person this, this, this kind of thing, they said they should go and pay this one, and they gave me a higher, you know. So, I think with this, um, you know, you have a little, you have put us giving us some enlightenment in that direction. Now, one other thing I want us to also look at, particularly when it comes to compliance. You know, you, you've talked about the fact that, you know, match for, you know, self-employed people. Yes. Now, this is the 11th day of February. Mm -hmm. what, what are you going to say to, the, you know, to those self-employed people? What are you going to say to the artisans? What are you going to say to all of them now, knowing that this is the 11th day of February and then before they begin to now say the internal revenue service have come again. <laughs> so what, what, do you have any words of advice? March is a long time from January for anybody to determine the preceding year's income. Okay. Remember, whatever we are asking for from the self-employed and the minimum tax people, well, they are all the self-employed yeah. anyway. Whatever we are telling them to declare would be for 2020. Okay. They have three months okay. to have collated their papers, looked into their records, and stuff like that. Okay. Now we have six weeks to the end of March. Yeah. So any time from now, their tax for, 20, for 2020 is overdue. Okay. So I am appealing to all the self-employed, especially our professionals. Okay. We know the law. We know what is expected of us. Yeah. Please, let us go online and file our returns or walk into any of the internal revenue service offices close to us. We have 34 tax stations spread across. There is nowhere you live that there won't be a tax station close to you to attend to you. Let us walk into them 
obtain our form A, we call it form A, income declaration form. Obtain it, fill it appropriately. We are always particular about the place where it says you declare your income according to that you may have several sources of income. So that form makes provisions for all the available sources. For the ones the Internal Revenue Service did not even think about, there is a column that says others. others okay. So if there's any other source of income that you have that we did not capture in that form, you declare it, come up with your total, okay. then the Internal Revenue Service will take it off from it. But there is no assessment we will raise on you that we won't discuss. That I can confirm. Okay, so I'm sure uh, people are listening. This is also another opportunity now uh, that the Internal Revenue Service is using to sensitize the public, let them know about you know the time frame, the deadlines for payments, so that we will not fall, will not run foul of the law. Now, Madam, unfortunately, time is not our friend. Uh, your last words now, as we begin to bring this program to a close. Compliance. That's to, our topic. To our taxpayers. Like we said when this program started, we want voluntary compliance. We appeal for voluntary compliance. Please and please don't wait for the Internal Revenue Service to come after you. Make it easy for us, the tax officials. Make it easy for the Ogun State Government to always have money in their accounts to do all these wonderful, wonderful projects that they are embarking upon. See you in the tax office. That is the back room. Thank you. <laughs> all right, now, uh, well... I will also see you. Oh, uh, I am uh, waiting. I am waiting. waiting. <laughs> so, you know, that's been our package for this week. I'm sure it's been quite enlightening. You know, compliance, the fact that you come, you fulfill all your necessary obligations without being forced. That's voluntary compliance. And I'm sure our guest has been able to enlighten us more, uh, especially for our self employed people. The time is almost running to the deadline. So begin to put your papers in place, walk up to any of the IRS offices closest to you and do the needful. I want to thank you very much, ma, for being part of this program today. It's a pleasure uh, being here. We look forward to bringing you again. We will have to look for a way we will come to get you again. It's been quite enlightening. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much, thank ma. You, thank you. So that's the package for this week. On the next week when we come your way again, please remember to pay your taxes and levies promptly. It's your responsibility, it's the law.